Welcome back to the VR Aperture, your source for the most detailed news in virtual reality and reviews from an engineer's perspective. I am your host of the Aperture, Destroy Troy. So today we're kicking off part one of the review series for the Valve Index Virtual Reality Kit. Part one, resolution. Before I get into the nitty gritty of the review, I would like to address some of the feedback I've been receiving about my videos specifically that I've been leaving some people in the dust, um, that I haven't been giving them enough uh, background to understand everything that I'm talking about. So today I'm going to give a little bit of background on resolution. If you'd like to go straight to the review, you can skip to the time here on your screen uh, and get straight to the review. So for those of you who need a little bit of background, Resolution with VR visors is a little bit different than resolution with, with your home flat screen. The competition by the various industries to improve the resolution, whether it be a home flat screen or a VR visor, is what I like to refer to as the pixel race. There's been various races in the past as far as electronics with computers. If you go back 10 years or so, it was the gigahertz race with your home flat screen. The race is to cram as many pixels onto the display as possible. So we had, you may not remember back, or you may not be aware of what was previously called 720p. Uh, then it was 1080p. That was the big one where everyone started getting the flat screens and the it was the prices dropped to where everyone could afford to get a big screen in their home and now we're on to 4k if 4k is four times the resolution of 1080p and in the future we'll eventually get to 16k each time that number will multiply by four it's a little bit different with visors it's not so much how how good of the resolution that they that the industry can create or the number of pixels they can cram in the display to some degree but not nearly as much in with vr visors we have what is called the screen door effect and let me kind of give you an illustration of the screen door effect i have here a screen door an actual screen door and as i hold it up to the camera and you look at my image on your display it's you can make you can kind of see all the hatch marks of the screen and it also kind of dulls the brightness. So we get this effect on VR visors because your eyeballs are crammed up right up to that display. You can experience this yourself if you go and put your basically your face right up to your home flat screen. For most of you, if you have a 1080p screen, um, it'd be harder with 4K, pretty much impossible with an OLED screen. But if you get really close with 1080p, you can see the kind of the individual pixels and then the lines that separate them. And when you are that close, like you are with a VR visor, you can actually make out that black line that's in between the pixels. And it creates what we call a screen door effect. For example, with previous visors like the Vive Pro where they increased the resolution but didn't do much for the screen door effect, that visor didn't do as well. I, I covered OLED versus LCD, uh, the screen door. Um, now Fresnel lenses, Fresnel lenses um, allow for an increased field of vision. But to give you a uh, a better idea of what it is. Here we have it in the HTC Vive. Now, I don't know how well you can see that. But there's concentric circles in there. And those circles not only diminish the resolution, but they also increase the glare effect when you have a bright image within the display and the glare propagates down through the, the concentric circles the rings and gives a fairly distracting visual a bit of vocabulary you want to learn is uh, fov or field of vision and this has to do with how constricted 
your peripheral vision is. So the less restricted, the wider your field of vision is. That's probably self-explanatory. But then we also have the sweet spot. So with the HTC Vive, the sweet spot was pretty small. It was like pretty much right there in front of your pupils. And so any peripheral vision that you did have was significantly blurred. The two more um, topics I wanna to cover before moving on to the review is uh, frame rate and interchangeably the term refresh rate. And this has to do with how many times per second the picture on your display is refreshing or being replaced by the next image. So in old time movies, you had a, a film and it was just a series of individual shots and played back at 24 hertz, which is the refresh rate of the human eye. And that's why that number was chosen. It's what it's, 24 frames per second is when it be, animation becomes indistinguishable for the human eye from still images being flashed. And then the last topic is persistence. Valve changing from OLED to LCD advertises claims that um, with LCD they get a lower persistence and this has to do with how quickly the previous image has been cleared away. So you have refresh rates, how many frames you can get in there per second, but then persistence is how fast you can get that previous image cleared out so that way you don't get a sort of blur, you get less of a blur. So now that we've covered all the topics, uh, let's move on to the nitty gritty of the review. So right off the bat, the display of the valve index visor is tremendously improved over previous visors, uh, specifically the HTC Vive and pretty much anything else that you're going to see out there. Sadly and unfortunately, I can't, you know, just hold the visor up to the camera and show you what I see, but take my word on it. It is, it is an incredible improvement. So how is the Valve headset better? Well, first off, the resolution. The HTC Vive was a, is a 1080p by 1200 display, that, whereas the Valve Index is a 1440 by 1600 display. Uh, and like I mentioned in the background, this is not as, a matter, as much of a dramatic effect as the reduction in the screen door effect. Valve having uh, swapped out OLED displays for LCD displays, the subpixels are much smaller and therefore the screen door effect is much smaller. And at this point, it's nearly indistinguishable. You, if you really look um, at lettering, you can kind of see the, the jagged lines that make uh, S's or some of the more curved letters, but it's a dramatic, dramatic improvement. Uh, and then to go along with that is the Fresnel lenses. Previously, the, the news that I had heard was that Valve was producing a whole new lens that wasn't going to use Fresnel lenses, lenses and therefore the concentric circles. But I, from my observation, I don't believe that this is the case. They have actually reduced the size of the concentric circles. Uh, so they're, once again, almost indistinguishable from the previous version. So once again, let me take show you. This is the HTC Vive. And hopefully you can see that. And then here is the valve index. So you can see not only uh, are those you can't really make out the concentric circles if you were to begin with but those lenses are dramatically more clear those are some crystal clear lenses in there and it shows when you wear it so in addition to having a less of an artifact from the concentric circles you get less of a glare as well and that is also a big improvement so you do get some glare still from bright white light sources within the display but they are dramatically reduced and it is not nowhere fits the description of God rays. The last big contributor to the display is the refresh rate. So previous displays 
uh, visors were 90 hertz. This is 120 hertz with 144 experimental mode. Um, some of you may be saying, well, if a human refresh rate is 24 frames per second, am I gonna notice the distinction between 60 and 90 or 90 and 120 or 120, 144? Some gamers who th think they have a very particular eye say that they can tell a difference. The, with the Valve having 120 hertz refresh rate, uh, I wish I could report more on how this affects the image that you're seeing, but the recommended specs that Steam has advertised for the machine, for the PC necessary to run the Valve Index is, I believe, a bit too forgiving. They recommend the GTX 970. Um, I have not only you know, the 10 series instead of the 9 series, but I have the GTX 1070, which is a $450 graphics card. Um, and I still can't maintain 120 frames per second. Forget about 144. Um, I can achieve 120 frames per second with this visor, but as soon as I turn my head or do any sort of action, that refresh rate drops dramatically. And so, in order for me to truly give you an accurate reporting on on the the effect of the increased the improved refresh rate from 90 to 120 or 144 hertz mode i would actually have to upgrade my computer from the 450 dollar gtx 1070 graphics card to either an 850 dollar uh, GTX 1080 or the $1,200 GTX 1080 Ti. That Ti is a significant uh, distinction. Um, and so, whereas before the image or display that I was receiving in virtual reality was limited by my visor, it is now limited by my PC. The valve here has created a much smaller screen door effect. And weirdly enough, they have done this by going backwards in technology that um, currently the HTC Vive is an OLED screen and you would think that would be the best possible picture that you could get with a visor, but you would be wrong. In fact, they found, the industry has found that the preferable means for displaying an image on a VR visor is not even, it's not OLED, it's not even LED, it's LCD. The LCD stands for liquid crystal display and if you go to your old calculator, you can get an example of what a liquid crystal display is. But with this older technology, they are able to reduce the size of what's called the sub-pixels. So just to reiterate one last time uh, before I wrap this up, we have like I said, is an incredible improvement as far as display goes with the Valve. Um, we have a much smaller screen door effect. We have an improved resolution. We have smaller Fresnel lens uh, circles, which create less of an artifact and less of a glare. We have the improved refresh rate if your machine can achieve it, and improved field of vision improved sweet spot and lower image persistence if you watch the this whole video you've learned what that is i'm gonna go ahead and wrap this video up now i hope you learned a lot um, i had a lot of fun sharing it with you and please look forward to the next video in the review series for the valve index virtual reality kit and so I want to thank you one last time for visiting the VR Aperture. Uh, if you like this video, please hit the thumbs up. We really need those likes. Our goal is to get 100 likes for this video. It will go a great distance to helping us uh, grow our channel. And another way that you can help support this channel is by subscribing. It helps us a great deal. We need 100 subscribers to get our custom YouTube URL, a web address. So if you can find it in your hearts to give us a thumbs up and subscribe, and we'll continue to put out as much detailed news about virtual reality as we can, as we get it.
So thank you again, and you all have a good night.